welcome along to week 32, our very last podcast for the 2018 season. We'd like to thank you all for watching and also a big thank you to everybody from all our clubs that helped make this podcast such a great success. In a few moments, we'll be taking you to Solar 21 Park for coverage of our final game from this year's season, the Connacht Gold Super Cup final between Kesselbar Celtic and Ballina Town. But first, a quick look at the results from the TP Brennan Connacht Cup Round 1 that took place across the province this weekend. On Saturday evening, Ballina Town B beat Loch Ray B by three goals to one. CP Ajax had a 5-2 win over Partry Athletic and Benalla B lost 6-4 to Rinmore B. Kalala lost 3-0 to St John's Athletic and Kusharaga had a resounding 6-0 win over Glynhest Rovers. Ballina United conceded the tie to Kesselbar Celtic B. Swinford lost 6-2 to Dynamo Blues. Con Rangers had a huge away win over Kinvara, winning by nine goals to one. Mary Ornmore B beat Snugbury United by five goals to one. And Ackley Rovers and Colmestown drew four all, with Rovers eventually winning 5-4 on penalties. The winners of all these ties would advance to round two of the TP Brennan Connacht Cup, where they were joined by the Super League teams. The losing teams will enter the Connacht Shield. But the big match of the day took place in Solar 21 Park, where Ballina Town took on Kesselbar Celtic in the Connacht Gold Super Cup final for the second year running. Prior to kick-off, the teams were presented to the Cahirlock of Mayo County Council, Councillor Blackie Gavin, to the sales manager of Connacht Gold, Sean Henry, and to the chairman of the Mayo Football League, Jerry Sweeney. The two sides met at the same stage last season, with Ballina Town eventually coming out on top by three goals to two after extra time. This would be the fifth encounter between the sides this season. Ballina Town have won two and they have drawn one, while Kesselbar Celtic won their most recent clash, the FEI Junior Cup tie, last month. But despite that recent win for Celtic over the town, it was Ballina that went into this one as firm favourites. No doubt Kesselbar Celtic will be disappointed with the performance on the day, but they can have no complaints at the outcome as Ballina Town were on top for the majority of the game. The outcome, though, could have been different had Liam Flatley taken the first real chance of the game when he somehow headed wide from just six yards out as he got on the end of a cross from Jason Hunt after 16 minutes. Ballina's Jason Cawley was causing all sorts of problems down the left wing and his low cross five minutes later somehow went right across the box as David O'Mahony looked odds on to score. Two minutes later, man of the match Dylan McKee lobbed a long ball forward that looked like it was gone out over the end line. Somehow, Fabiano Macario saved the ball and forced a corner. Dylan McKee took the resultant corner and David O'Mahony met it and headed past Stephen Carfagy in the Kesselbar Celtic goal. The same two players combined again on 35 minutes as Ballina doubled their lead. Edwards was again the provider as his excellent pinpoint cross from the left wing was headed home by O'Mahony from six yards out, leaving Stephen Carfagy with no chance in the Celtic goal. There were chances for both sides early in the second half as Fabio Macario almost made it 3-0 but almost instantly Jose Sala had a great chance to reduce the deficit to a single goal. Benny Lavelle then replaced the injured O'Mahony and almost immediately had a chance to seal the win but his low shot was well saved by Carfagy. Jamie Cawley did make it 3-0 as he calmly rounded Carfagy to finish the ball in an empty net after some great work down the right wing by Fabiano Macario and man of the match Dylan Edwards. The chances kept coming for Ballina Town and Carfagy saved well from McKee. Binny Lavelle then wrapped up the scoring as he curled the ball into the top right-hand corner of the net after Cawley had laid on a pass to him from the left-hand wing. Ballina were soon celebrating as the final whistle went and Mark Duffy picked up the Connacht Gold Super Cup for the second time in his career to add to the Elvery Sports Super League title that they won just a few weeks ago. second trophy of the year and Mick we were talking last week and you promised goals and you certainly delivered today oh yeah and it could have been more um, I think uh, to a tee we were from from Markey 
to the substitutes that came on, we, we, we uh, gave a performance worthy of a, of, of, um, of a trophy and, and uh, worthy of our season. And uh, the cup final that we had there a few weeks back, uh, we didn't really play to our potential. So the main thing for me today uh, and Deck and Tom was just to make sure that we play to our potential because they're a serious bunch of lads talent-wise and they did today and, and it shows you their potential when they play. In preparation for the match as well, you had to reshuffle the, the deck there a few times with a few changes and a few unexpected names on the starting lineup there today. Yeah, there was, and that's what you know. I was talking to somebody there a minute ago about the, the squad and, and uh, players having to come in. You look at David O'Mahony coming in there, uh, he's been a, a, a brilliant addition for us coming in and bringing goals. A uh, different type of player for us, you know, and uh, uh, yeah, so it's, 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 it's brilliant. Very proud, very proud of, of their perf performance, you know. And you, you, you did mention that cup final a couple of weeks or a few couple of months ago where you just really didn't perform. So what was your thinking? What, what team did you pick or what tactics did you intend to use coming into today's game? Yeah, well, I think the main thing was to get the performance, you know, that we didn't give in that game and uh, very much aware of Celtic and, and, and what a great side they are attacking-wise in particular. Uh, they came to Oblique a few weeks ago and, and, and gave us a, a demonstration, you know, of, of attacking, you know, they were clinical. And uh, if we could deal with that, uh, you know, that was uh, the first plan and then go and play ourselves without fear and, and uh, I think in the last final we didn't but today we certainly released all shackles and, and, and uh, you know, very, you know, give a performance that the, the club that can be proud of, the club can be proud of but also the town. They represented the town today as well and, and, uh, uh, and they represented very well, you know, so we're very happy. And the team were certainly up for it as well. You know, the comments on the sideline, the comments on the press box that I was listening to on the sideline, at least any of us, were all of that that you were first to every single ball, that probably every every matchup on the pitch went in your favour. Yeah, yeah. And that was a big thing as well, wanting it. But the players wanted anyway, you know, they wanted it in the cup final, but they were thrown off their game and uh, in, the, in the last final. But they wanted it, and, and uh, all through the season they've shown that they want it. And that's why they have achieved uh, what they have achieved, you know, just trying to be the best they can be. And uh, yes, they missed out in the cup final a few months back to Manuda, but you know, to, to reach two finals, to win the league like they did, shows you what they're capable of and what they, what they have achieved. So we're very, very proud, very proud as a manager anyway. Mark, I'm going to move on to you. Your, your second time lifting this trophy, uh, last, last year as well. <coughs> and, and it is a very hard trophy to win. It's not always the, the best team or the, the league winners that actually get to this stage. Because it, it is a very competitive competition right through from round one. Yeah, no, absolutely. We've had a, we had a difficult journey to the final as well. We've had uh, Bangor, Ballyglass, Westport, and obviously Castlebar today. So by no means was it a, a, an easy, easy journey. Um, but just absolutely thrilled to be able to uh, to get over the line uh, today again. It's great. And it's, it's true to say that you would have been in here as, as, as favourites. How did the team manage to deal with that? Um, I, I, yeah... I, I heard during the week, uh, like obviously the, we were given the favourites tag, but uh, the last game we played against Castlebar, uh, they came to Bleak where we're usually quite strong and, uh, and, and bet us. So we were under no illusions. And we were obviously missing a few big players as well today. Um, so we are under no illusions in terms of the task ahead of us. Um, but obviously wasn't to be able to come through. Um, but in terms of favourites tag, we didn't, we didn't see ourselves as, um, you know, uh, anywhere ahead, anything like that. Um, that, that wasn't an, an issue for us because we knew the threat that Castlebar posed. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't an issue for us. Let's move on to Fabiano Macario. Fabiano, it's true to say you've been one of the stars of this year's uh, league, uh, just racing down the wing with carrying the ball at enormous speed and, and doing some great stuff with, it, with the ball, scoring lots of goals as well. Uh, how, how, how have you managed to, to come into the club and how, what, have, what has it been like for you to, to, to come into this team? How have you enjoyed? You happy? Happy playing uh, with the club? I'm very happy for play for Balana. I'm very proud. Hopefully, play for more one one year here. I'm happy. And, and, and it's, a, it's a much happier day than, than the last time you were here. It, it led to an injury that, that kept you out of the game for for maybe two months, was it? Yeah, about two, maybe two months. Yeah. So a much happier return here to Solar Twenty One Park today. I'm happy for. The injury, the injury as well, you know, the injury was difficult coming back, wasn't it? It was difficult for me to come back, but I'm happy for, I'm back. You're back. Yeah. I play football, I like play football. Yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. 
he was not good when he when he doesn't play. He's not a happy boy. Uh, that's a fact. That is a fact. He needs to be. He needs to. He needs to have a ball at his feet. Okay, just going to go back to the the, the, the season now because it's been an incredible season. Uh, uh, Mick, what would be the standout memory from this standout season for you? Oh man, um, I don't know. I, I think back to when we lost that final uh, against Manola. The next game was always going to be a big one. We had a two week gap, but we went up to Bally Glass. And we had a resounding win up there. Uh, five win, I think of Westport away, um, going to the home of the champions, winning four nil, and uh, obviously days like this are big as well. Um, I don't know, standout moment. There's loads of them. There's loads of them. You know, even seeing Fabiano coming back today after you know that the pain that he's been through. You know, uh, over the last few weeks. You know, um, missing loads of games, missing the missing the game where we won, the, lifted the, the league, uh, to see him back playing is, is, is a standout moment, you know, there's loads of them, uh, I cannot really pin it down as such, but, you know, this is certainly one. And, and, and Mark, I suppose when you look back to, you, know, the, you went through an, an amazing run of, of winning almost yeah. every single game, when did it dawn on the players that, that you had something special here, that, that you were really going to make a challenge on the title and, and other trophies? Um, I, I suppose just, I suppose, from the onset, we had a strong start, and we would have always had self belief, and that's the management would instill that uh, in us. Um, in terms of when it dawned on us going up to Westport, um, though it was about midway through the season, um, and having a you know we did we a good victory there, um, and I suppose about halfway through the season, you know it was clear to see uh, the work we'd been putting in, but we we were always we always had self belief in ourselves, so we were putting in the hours off the pitch, um, and. You know, thankfully it came together on days like today um, and obviously winning the league as well. Um, but you know, we've had our fair share of uh, you know, difficult seasons where um, we've lost cup finals, we've gone close to winning the league but haven't, playing good football and different things like that but not getting over the line. So we, we don't take it for granted um, and yeah, so we're just delighted. delighted. And uh, back to you Mick, I won't keep you too much longer. Uh, where is the club going to go? Where the club is in, in, in great shape with, with underage and the B team uh, winning their, their, their league as well. Mm -hmm. But for this particular team, it's a bit of experience, a lot of youth in it. Where can this team go? And where can they go? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, the, the <clears throat> there's no limits really. Uh, but I think, first of all, a break might be needed. Uh, they've put in a serious, a serious shift all season. so. Um, you know, uh, I think they need to refresh the minds, the bodies, and just kind of uh, enjoy the next week or so or whatever before this kind of cup game. And um, uh, that must yeah. be target now, though. Um, yeah, well, it's uh, I put any, any pressure on your brain. Any, any, anything we be. anything we go into or enter should be a target, really. You know, and uh, and uh, it's just to kind of make sure that we f uh, refresh first before we go and hit that. You know, but yes, of course, it's a target. It should always be because they're good enough. But now they. When you see trophies on the table and stuff like that, now they might begin to realise even more how capable they are. And they certainly are capable of going the distance in that as well. And that's a tro trophy that we haven't won. So, of course, they should be looking for that. And, and we certainly will be. Two years ago. Yeah. 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 Uh, we haven't won it for a while. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. And Fabiano, I'm going to leave the last words to you. And this is our, our very last podcast of the season as well. How are you going to celebrate tonight's victory? How are you going to celebrate? Celebrate. Yeah. I'm going to celebrate tonight. Drinkies. <laughs> Few drinks. <laughs> Few coffee. You dance a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Do you want to give a little dance to <laughs> <you? laughs> it? I think you're well entitled to, to dance a lot. You're back from injury and everything. There's not going to risk any injuries. No, and, uh, just thanks to the Mayor League once again for a um, brilliant season um, in terms of organisation and then professionally yourself, Sean, and everyone on the podcast. It's it's been brilliant, and uh, thanks to Jerry and everyone. Much appreciated. It's it's been you know, uh, we we do this work on the field, but I mean the, there's an awful lot of work that goes in behind the scenes that we lots of people don't know about. And uh, as Jerry said to me before about the family, the Mayo League football family is a family, and uh, we all need to push together and going forward to keep trying to improve and, and always trying to trying to be better as a, as a league, you know. And I think this forum coming up at the end of November is going to be something that's going to help. So. Yeah, so hopefully we'll, uh, it's all, all to go in the right direction to be a, a better league for, for everybody involved. And on behalf of the league, I'd like to, to congratulate you first and foremost on, on a magnificent season. But also thank you very much for entertaining us.
because you've been really the, 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 the flag bearers for the league this, this season. And thank you very much for all your cooperation with the, with the podcast and everything else this year. And I think now it's time to let Fabiano show us his dancing and, uh, <laughs> and we'll finish it up on this year. Fabulous! <laughs> And what better way to wrap up the Mayo Football Show podcast for 2018. Thank you all for watching and thanks to everybody who sent us messages of support over the year. Since our very first podcast 32 weeks ago, we have captured more than 400 goals on camera. And now we need your help. We want you to tell us who scored the best goal from the 2018 season. Your suggestions will make up a short list and the judging panel will announce the winner at the Mayo Football League presentation dinner in the Castle Court Hotel in January. And that's it. Congratulations to all the winners from all our divisions and all the Cups. And we look forward to seeing you in 2019.